Chapter Six: The Journey from Petal Nine and Three Quarters. Harry's last month with the Dursleys wasn't fun. True, Dolly was now so scared of Harry he wouldn't stay in the same room. While Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon didn't show Harry in his cupboard, force him to do anything, or shout at him. In fact, they didn't speak to him at all. Half terrified, half furious. They act as though Annie Chan was Harry and it was Auntie. Although this was an improvement in many ways, it did become a bit depressing after a while. Harry kept to his room with his new owl for company. He had decided to call her Hedwig, a name he had found in a history of magic. His school books were very interesting. He lay on his bed, re- reading late into the night. Hedwig swooping in and out of the open window as she pleased. It was lucky that Aunt Petunia didn't come in to Hoover anymore, because Hedwig kept bringing that back down mice every night before he went to sleep. Harry ticked off another day. On the piece of paper he had pinned to the wall, counting down to September the first. On the last day of August, August, he thought he'd better speak to his aunt and uncle about getting to King's Cross Station next day. So he went down to the living room where they were watching a quiz show on television. He cleared his throat to let them know he was there, and Dudley screamed and ran from the room. Er, Uncle Vernon, Uncle Vernon grunted to show he was listening. Er, I need to be at King's Cross tomorrow to to go to Hogwarts. Uncle Vernon grunted again. Would it be all right if you gave me a lift? Grunt. Harry supposed that meant yes. Thank you. He was about to go back upstairs when Uncle Vernon actually spoke. Funny way to get to Wizarding School. The train. Magic carpets all got punctures, had they? Harry didn't say anything. Where is this school anyway? I don't know," said Harry, realizing this for the first time. He pulled the ticket Harry had given him out of his pocket. "I just take the train from platform nine and three quarters at eleven o'clock." He read. His aunt and uncle stared. "Platform what? Nine and three quarters? Don't talk rubbish," said Uncle Vernon. "There is no platform nine and three quarters." It's on my ticket," barking said said Uncle Vernon, howling mad. "The lot of them, you'll see. You just wait. All right, we'll take you to King's Cross. We're going to Le- we're going up to London tomorrow, aren't we? Or I wouldn't bother. Why are you going to London?" Harry asked, trying to keep things friendly. Taking Dudley to hospital," growled Uncle Vernon. Got to have that ruddy tail removed before he goes to Smedings. Harry woke at five o'clock the next morning and was too excited and nervous to go back to sleep. He got up and pulled on his jeans because he didn't want to walk into the station in his wizard's robes. He changed on the train. He checked his Hogwarts list yet again to make sure he had everything he needed. Saw that Hedwig was shut safely in her cage, and then paced the room, waiting for the Dursleys to get up. Two hours later, Harry's huge, heavy trunk had been loaded into the Dursleys' car. Aunt Petunia had t- talked Dudley into sitting next to Harry, and they had set up. They reached King's Cross at half past ten. Uncle Vernon dumped Harry's trunk onto a trolley and wheeled it into the station for him. Harry thought this was strangely kind until Uncle Vernon stopped that. 
facing the platform so the nasty grin on his face. <laughs> well, there you are, boy. Platform 9, platform 10. Your platform should be somewhere in the middle, but they don't seem to have built it. Built it yet, do they? He was quite right, of course. There was a big plastic plastic number nine over one plat one plastic platform and a big plastic number ten over the one next to it. And in the middle, nothing at all. Have a good time, said Uncle Vernon with an even nastier smile. He left without another word. Harry turned and saw the Dorsey's drive away. All three of them were laughing. Harry's mouth went rather dry. What on earth was he going to do? He was starting to attract a lot of funny looks because of Hedwig. He'd have to ask someone. He stopped a passing guard, but didn't dare mention Platform 9 as three quarters. The guard had never heard of Hogwarts, and when Harry could, couldn't even tell him what part of the country it was in, he started to get annoyed. As though Harry was being stupid on purpose, getting desperate. Harry asked for the train that left at 11 o'clock, but the guard said there wasn't one. In the end, the guard strode away, muttering about time wasters. Harry was now trying hard not to panic. According to the large clock over the arrivals board, he had ten minutes left to get on a train to Hogwarts, and he had no idea how to do it. He was stranded in the middle of a station with a trunk to uh, he could hardly lift, a pocket full of withered money, and a large owl. Harry must have forgotten to tell him something you had to do, like tapping the third brick on the left to get into the dark alley. He wondered if he should get out his get out his wand and start tapping the ticket box between platforms nine and ten. At that moment, a group of people passed just behind him, and he caught a few words of what they were saying. Cat with muggles, of course. Harry swung around, uh, swung round. The speaker was a plump woman who was talking to four boys. All was flaming red hair. Each of them was pu pushing a truck like Harry's in front of him, and they had an owl. Heart hammering, Harry pushed his trolley after them. They stopped, and so did he. Just near enough to hear what they were saying. Now, what's the platform number? said the boy's mother. Nine and three quarters, piped a small girl, also red headed, who was holding her arm, a hand. Mom, can I go? You are not old enough, Jenny. Now be quiet. All right, Percy, you go first. What looked like the oldest boy marched towards platforms nine and ten. Harry watched, carefully not to blink in case he missed it. But just as the boy reached the divide between the two platforms, a large crowd of to tourists came swarming in front of him. And by the time the lost rock stack had cleared away, the boy had vanished. Fred, you next, the plump woman said. I'm not Fred, I'm George, said the boy. Honestly, woman, call yourself our mother. Can't you tell I'm George? Sorry, George, dear. Only joking, I'm Fred, said the boy, and off he went. His twin called after him to hurry up, and he must have done, because a second later, he had gone, but how had he done it?